In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to integrate Google Custom Search into your website, starting with creating your custom search account, creating the search engine, designing it, all the settings that go with it if you want to change those settings. And after this video, you're going to be able to monetize the search function on your WordPress site really easily. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe, then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And with that out of the way, let's create this Google custom search engine and start monetizing search on your site. I'll see you in the screen capture. One of the biggest reasons people want to add Google custom search to their website is because they can monetize the search results by showing Google AdSense ads on them. So it's important to have Google AdSense account when you're creating a Google custom search. And likewise, if you sign in with your Google account that has the AdSense account associated with it, some of these steps are automated for you because Google knows what your AdSense account is. If you don't do it that way, a couple extra steps, no big deal though. If you don't have an AdSense account yet, to show you how to apply for one, whether or not you're approved will be dependent on Google and whatever they decide, it's entirely out of our hands, but hopefully they do approve you. And if you already have one, that's great. So to add this search engine to your site, first thing we have to do is sign in on cse.google.com. Click on sign in right here. Then we choose a Gmail account of ours. If you don't have one, you can create one easily on this step. So just quickly sign in. And then if you already have search engines associated with your account, they're listed here. You can click on add to add a new one or new search up here to create a new one. And what we have to do here is type in the sites to search. Now there's some specific things you can do if you wanna be more specific. You can search individual pages by having the specific URL to the page. An entire site by doing this option with the star, the asterisk at the end there says anything can be after the dot com. So search this site with anything after the dot com. So any URL on that site. You can search specific parts of your site, little subdirectories if you want. You can search an entire domain, including subdomains by putting the asterisk before the first period where the www normally goes. I'm gonna choose this option here. Just copy that. Paste it in here to search my entire site because I have no subdomains. Replace my site with your actual site and another input field popped up. We can add more sites here if you want. So I'm just for fun, I'm gonna add in the main site, WPLearningLab.com. And now you can pull in search results from these two sites. When I fill this in, another one popped up. I don't know what the limit is, but I'm pretty sure the limit's very high. So you can pull search results in from a bunch of sites. Then we select our language down below. We also have to name the search engine. And then there are advanced options which allow you to restrict what search results are pulled in based on schema.org types. So if you pull in search results from just your own site or 10 different sites or whatever you want, you can then have those results only show if they're specific schema.org types. So if you go to schema.org, if you're not familiar with these, it's just a way to organize your content. Go to schemas, show the full list. And this is all the different ways to organize content. Ones you're probably familiar with are things like recipe, so if you apply this to your page, Google knows there's a recipe on there. They'll know there's going to be ingredients, there's going to be ingredient amounts, and they sometimes show that in their search results. So this helps Google identify stuff that they can show in their search results. There's a schema.org type for nearly anything you can think of. And this helps Google understand what your sites are about. And the Google Search Console can help you a lot in applying these schema.org types to your site. And I'm going to create a tutorial for that as well because it's important stuff. But that's an advanced option here. If you want to use that, go for it. If you don't, you can skip it. Then click on Create at the bottom. And now we have our new search engine. Flying robot down here. Awesome. We can click on Get Code to install this on our site. Now, there's a couple ways you can install this. You can do it on a page in your WordPress site or even in a post if you want. Or you can have a separate template that you can create that will have just the search engine in it if you want. It's up to you how you do it. But you, all you have to do is copy this code and it says here, paste it into a div element inside the body section, which is a regular post and page and their content. So if we head back to our WordPress site, add a new page, I'm going to call this search this site and then paste in the code, click on publish and we view this page and it takes a second or two. There it is right there. We have some CSS conflict issues, obviously which will be fixed with CSS. But there's something in this theme that's causing the search bar and button to look kind of hokey. But 
we can type in here what we want to search. For example, I know there's a post on this site with the word movie in it, so I'm just going to use movie as an example. Click on search, and now we have our movie listings on this site that appear. Remember how I said we'd have results from other sites we can pull in? We have one right here from WP Learning Lab. So even though the search engine is on wp-phd.com, it pulls in results from whatever other website you want, which is pretty cool stuff. There's an ad up here, which is how we monetize our search results. This ad is actually not mine right now. This is just a regular Google ad. Google gets the entire commission because I haven't added my AdSense code to the custom search engine yet. So let's go do that. Head back into custom search. Over here, we can edit our search engine. We pick the one we want to edit. Click on setup. Now we can add a bunch of things like description, keywords. We'll get to this in a second, actually. Click on the make money tab at the top. Turn on search engine monetization. And because this Gmail account of mine has my AdSense account as well, it pulls in my publisher code automatically. If yours doesn't have the AdSense account on this Gmail account, then you have to put it in manually. That's really the only manual labor you have to do. If we go back to the basics tab, these keywords are important when you're pulling information in from other sites. So you can restrict or refine your search results based on keywords, which is pretty handy. Or in the free edition with no ads, because that's the only edition available these days. There used to be a paid one, but as of April 2017, they got rid of the paid option. You can turn on image search if you want, speech input if you want, the language, this probably auto detects your language based on your IP. Advanced section, you can have transliteration, search engine encoding, probably don't need the advanced stuff. You can add more sites to search from or less. You can delete them if you want, just click the checkbox, press delete. You can use a filter. In this field right here, you would add in things that the search results URLs should contain to be included in your search. Maybe you have a business site and you want to include business articles from Forbes.com, but you don't want to include the gaming articles they have on there. So then you find something in the URL, usually a category in the URL, you input that here, and then it will apply that filter. So only if that is in the URL will it show up in your search results, which is pretty handy, or it can be anyway, depending on your situation. And then again, we have the restrict pages down here with schema.org. We can submit this for indexing and removal requests via Google Search Console. So if you have Google Search Console, you can link these two together and they can show you tips to make it easier and better to use the search engine on your site. On the admin tab, we have some basic admin stuff where you can define users to be able to add and remove sites. On the advanced tab, we can further refine which sites are included and not included by using these options here. In our look and feel, we can define a little bit how our results look and feel. So we can have a two page layout. So you display a search box on one page and then the search results appear on another one. Let's say we wanna replace this search box over here. Let's see if we can do that. Let's just copy this, go into our widgets, remove this search option inside of this old text widget I used for something else, paste in that code, actually go to the text tab first, then paste in the code. Since it's pulling in JavaScript, this should execute without a problem. This, if this was PHP, we'd have to get another plugin for that to work. But if we refresh over here, we should be getting our Google search bar right here, and we are. Let's go to our homepage. So here, again, the CSS has to be fixed, but we can type in our search here. Let's call it movies, click on search, and then we have this overlay pop-up appear. So you can have search results show like that. Or if we go into here and use two page, save and get code, but just copy this code quickly, paste it in here. Refresh, look up movies, click on search. Now it takes us to a separate page with the search result which might be how you want to do it. And then if we head back out here, there's a bunch of different options you can use depending on what you want to create on your site. You can choose from different themes, colors, sizes, that kind of thing. You can customize as well, customize your fonts, your colors, all that sort of stuff. We have on this site, let me go back to the search box. Like I've mentioned already, we have a CSS issue here so on yours, this may appear perfectly. 
but on this one there's some kind of CSS conflict that is outside of the scope of this tutorial. I can make a specific Google search CSS tutorial, but yours may be perfect. And you could probably change the settings in here, here's a preview on this side, to make it appear how you like it, and then that'll be good enough. You don't have to do actual custom CSS on your site. Thumbnails in search, on or off, those are basically, if we do another search, this would be a thumbnail in the search right here. So you can turn those on or off using this option. There's search features as well. The promotions area is actually pretty cool. You can add in a URL or multiple that appear for specific searches and you can define what they are. So if someone comes to your site and searches for a red t-shirt, you can have a specific URL that shows up that links them to maybe a red t-shirt sales page on your site. And the URL you enter doesn't have to be part of your search engine or part of the sites that, you're, that you search or that you index. It could be an affiliate link to Amazon if you want. So to enable this, just click on on here and then we click on add and then we fill in the triggering queries which is basically what search are they gonna input to trigger this pop-up to appear. And this is a preview of what it'll look like right here. We can change the title, we could say something like red shirts on Amazon, have this be a uh, the actual URL, which I don't have. Let's call this amazon.com. Description, buy the best red shirts. Here, URL to a thumbnail. Thumbnails obviously increase click-through rate, so you might, might wanna have that on. You can have a starting date and an ending date for this promotion box. Then we click on OK, actually we need the trigger. Movie, movies, my favorite example right now. So we click on save, that is currently on. If you recall, this search right here is for movies. We do not have any reference to Amazon on here. If I search for the word Amazon, actually there are two, Amazon Prime Video, Amazon Originals. So there's search for red shirt. No mention of red shirts in here. So if we go back and do the search again, I don't think I have to update my search code for this. No, I don't. We now have this fancy box right here that says red shirts, which like I said, could be an affiliate link to wherever you want. It can go wherever you want, it doesn't matter. But when they search for movies, that appears. If I search for cars in here, that box does not appear. So you could literally spend all day in here creating different promotions for different search queries and have them all go to a specific spot where you want. The refinements basically allow you to restrict content to specific categories, autocomplete, I'm sure you've seen this, you start typing a search and then you have results appear down below. So you can enable autocomplete. You can even add custom autocompletes, including promotions again. So Google really wants to help you monetize the search a lot by adding these promotions. Synonym search, you can add synonyms. So someone searched for movies, maybe you wanna have a misspelling of movies as being a synonym for that search, which Google does automatically in some cases, but not in all of them. In the advanced tab, all these are, are advanced. You don't have to set any of these. You can keep them just plain vanilla how they are and not worry about it. But if you wanna poke through these and refine your search even more, you can do that. Most people just wanna search engine that searches the content on their site and has some AdSense ads, which is what this thing does out of the box. All these extra things are extra. Once you have your search engine running for a while, you can go to statistics and logs and you can see what kind of searches are being done on your site. Here will be a list of searches, how many times they're searched, whether people found the result they wanted. You can integrate Google Analytics, and you can get more information about your search engine in Google Analytics, which is pretty awesome. So that could, that could tell you which page they're on when they do a specific search. So they might be on a page where you explain how to build a car, and in the search bar, they might be adding in, how do I add a tail light to my car? Which normally would be part of that article, how to build a car but you're missing something on the tail light that they need help with. You can take that data, you can go back and refine your content better to provide what people are looking for and have them not be frustrated searching for it, not finding it and leaving your site. There's an audit log in here, and this basically shows you which user updated which features on what day and what time. In the business option, this is the last option for our Google stuff in here. Here we decide whether or not to show ads on results pages. 
you have to agree to Google Terms to do this, of course, but that's kind of the whole point of using Google Search on your site is to have ads so you can monetize it. So this should double check in here to make sure this is on. It's on by default in most cases, I believe, but just double check that it is. And now we have our Google Search engine that wherever you put this JavaScript code, your search bar will appear. As you saw, creating Google Custom Search is quick and easy. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe. Then click the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.